here about to react to the worst prison in medieval history. Let's get to it. It was established in 1188 under the reign of King Henry II. What was constructed out of a group of cells housed in London city walls above the Newgate Gatehouse soon became known as a place of darkness and despair. Nicknamed Hell on Earth, the prison became so synonymous with terror and misery that even the hangman's noose became a welcome escape. Let's travel back in time now to the Middle Ages and find out what <laughs> life was like madness. at the notorious Newgate prison. Welcome to Medieval Madness. As much as they call it correctional facility, but to me it's not. The Prisoner at the Gate. The original Roman city walls had seven gates through which London's main roads mm -hmm. ran to the other parts of the country. The one that went south and west passed through Newgate, which had an archway with a portcullis and two guardroom towers. In times of rebellion, when there were likely to be a large number of arrests and London's two official prisons became full, those seven gatehouses would often be used to house prisoners. The sanctioned prisons, the Fleet and the Tower of London were under the King's jurisdiction. Outside of the city walls, it was the nobles who were in charge of justice, and prisoners were usually kept in the dungeon or keep of the local lord's castle. In the early Middle mm -hmm. Ages, the idea of jail as a punishment was unknown. Instead, prisons were just a place where the accused was held until their trial. Sort of like a remand centre is today. In medieval jails, there was no differentiating between genders or severity of crimes either. Men and women, murderers, rapists and pickpockets were all kept together. On remand. In 1166, Henry II brought yeah. in the Assize of Clarendon. They were legal reforms that gave the crown more control over the judicial system and transformed English law. Now courts were organized in towns around the country and carried out trials by jury instead of the old trials by ordeal or combat. But where were the accused to be kept whilst they waited for their trials? In London, Henry decided that another jail was needed, so a piece of land was bought for three yeah. pounds six shillings and eight pence next to Newgate, where Old Bailey joins Newgate Street. In 1236, a further one hundred pounds was spent to improve the prison, and one of the stone okay. towers and the dungeons were added to the jail. As in most jails at that time, one side was for the rich and the other for the poor. It was probably the rich side that had an extra sixty-six pounds spent on it in 1281 for privy cleaning. Two windows and two doors were installed to separate <laughs> the convicts from the privy. Extra guards were added temporarily for four nights to prevent anyone from escaping whilst the renovations were ongoing. In 1316, Edward II had the sewer restored at mm. speed. Considering no money had been spent on Newgate for 200 years, they must have been in a grim state to cause such a panic. In 1406, female prisoners made a complaint about the overcrowded conditions. They also felt great shame and hurt because they had to walk past the male quarters to reach the toilets. A separate tower was built to accommodate their privy, and although they slept in different areas, men and women continued to mix freely in Newgate, and there was no segregation. Inevitably, many women became pregnant whilst incarcerated, and it's impossible to know whether sexual relations were consensual or not. Women could plead to the belly and discover hanging if they could prove a pregnancy, so it's plausible that some may have whiled away the long hours by trying to conceive. Mm. your voice. Fetid, foul and filthy. On arrival, okay. prisoners were chained and led to the cells. Many were forgotten about and mm. left to suffer there and starve. Those who had already been tried and were under sentence of death were shackled in the cellar under the keeper's house. This was basically an open sewer, dank, Bit dark, person. and dirty. Such the whole place was infected by lice and bedbugs. It was said that they were so numerous that they crunched underfoot as people walked over them. Living together in such crowded, unsanitary conditions was a breeding ground for germs, mm. and Newgate had its fair share of contagious outbreaks. Uh, One was so bad that in 1419 the prison had to be shut oh down. God. 22 prisoners died from jail fever in one year. Ooh. Jail fever, which is now thought to have been typhus, is known to be spread oh, by infected body fun. lice, fleas, and mites known as chiggers, and is easily caught when people are crowded together in dark, filthy places. Mm -hmm. Some prisoners who were put before the courts often infected everyone around them, and the disease moved out into the general population. By the end of the 12th century, 12 more jails had joined Newgate mm -hmm. in the city. 
Some house those who had committed specific offences like the Tun, which accommodated streetwalkers and lewd women. Others held minor offenders such as debtors or adulteresses. When Ludgate Prison closed in 1419, after being in use for around 100 years, the <coughs> convicts were transferred to Newgate. Deaths inside Ooh. the jail escalated because of the chronic oh, overcrowding and the fetid and no. corrupt atmosphere. Go. Money talks. Now, over a quarter of a century old, mm -hmm. Newgate was in a shocking state, and in 1423, the famous Lord Mayor Dick Whittington left Ooh. enough money in his will for a rebuild. The larger jail and gatehouse took eight years to build and housed 150 prisoners. There was a chapel and a water fountain, although the water was polluted and also caused a great deal of illness. In the Middle Ages, the day-to-day -day running of a prison was done by a keeper. These men were usually greedy and brutal, and they were paid very little for a dangerous and thankless job. They also had to pay the turnkeys and maintain the prison out of their own pockets, so well, they certainly made the most of their position and often sold essential items to the prisoners at inflated prices. As is usually the way, those with money were treated much better than those without. Even those convicted of the most heinous crimes would be treated well if they could afford to pay the keeper. The accommodation around the gate was ironically for freemen of the city and other honest persons. This was mm -hmm. the best area, and rooms with a window and a fireplace could be had for a fee. They were also higher up away from the stench. Major criminals and anyone regarded as a flight risk were kept in the dungeon holes underground. Mm -hmm. Common prisoners had to settle for sharing the cells on the lower floors. Some were kept on wards with no privacy at all. A fee could be paid to have a lighter <laughs> set of shackles fitted or have them removed altogether. <laughs> the keeper charged the gentleman three shillings a week for bed and board, although uh, inmates uh, could bring their own beds for free. Coal was charged at half a pence for a peck, full and heaped up, or two pence for a bushel. 1346. Long, long time ago. The keeper. In 1346, the new keeper of Newgate was appointed by the authorities as part of reforms when they realized the caliber of men attracted to the job were not exactly men with a good moral compass. Then, keepers were banned from taking charity from the prisoners, charging excessive fees for beds, or for hurrying along a trial date. In some extreme cases, charges were brought against the jailers themselves. <laughs> In 1244, a sheriff sergeant named John Shep was convicted because he had thrown a prisoner into one of the dungeons so violently that his neck snapped. Mm -hmm. In the early 14th century, two keepers named Edmunds de Lorimer and Ooh. Hugh de Croydon were convicted of torture and extortion. Lorimer was charging four times the legal price for the removal of shackles. And a keeper was imprisoned in 1449 for raping a female inmate. In just one year, between 1315 and 16, 62 deaths were investigated by the coroner in Newgate. Inmates In the late 13th century, imprisonment became regarded as a punishment with the usual sentence lasting for a year and a day. Ooh. If you stole a hawk in 1361, you would be sentenced to two years in jail. For kidnapping, you would spend the rest of your sorry life there. For those on remand, many languished in jail for years before they were even given a trial. Such as John de Munden in 1352, who complained to the sheriff after being kept in Newgate for five years. Mm. He claimed that a mistake had been made when he was committed, but he had wrongly filled out a form and his petition was thrown out. In Newgate, as in most medieval jails, murderers were a rarity. Usually, Grand thieves and debtors made up the majority of the prison crimes, population, yes, but other crimes so could land you in jail oh. like burglary, assault, or the carrying of a weapon. Drawing a dagger would get you 15 days, using it to wound would get you 40. In the 1320s, William at Seal, a baker, was found to be using molding boards so that he could make underweight bread, but still sell it for the usual price. Seal was found guilty of the crime along with 11 other men and two women, and they were all sent to Newgate. Seal also had to spend a day in the pillory for his deceit. The author, Sir Thomas Mallory, found himself on the wrong side of the law in 1451. Despite being a sheriff and a justice of the peace at one time, this didn't prevent Mallory from being charged with rape, extortion, and the attempted murder of the Duke of Buckingham. He spent time in the Tower, Ludgate, and Newgate, where he wrote some of his novel based on the tales of King Arthur. Over the eight years of his incarceration, Mallory had it easy in jail and was supplied with many of his home comforts, including his clothes, food, paper, quill, and ink. And then he was pardoned in 1461 by King Edward IV. Another man was not so fortunate. Thomas mm -hmm. Usk was convicted of treason and given the sentence of being drawn, hung, and beheaded, and that his head <laughs> should be set up over Newgate. 
It took 30 strikes of the axe to finally decapitate him. Hell on Earth Today, the site of the notorious Newgate prison is home to the Old Bailey. The area still has close ties to the justice system as the Central Criminal Court is based there and is the principal court in the City of London. There is nothing to remind the public of the horrors suffered in the infamous old prison, just a modest blue plaque on the wall of the court, which reads, Site of Newgate, Demolished 1777. Across the street, some of the old cells are said to languish beneath the Viaduct Tavern, a Victorian gin palace. Ooh. It's not surprising that with such a dark history, the area is steeped in creepy tales yeah. of strange happenings. Legends always begin in places of terror where human beings are subjected to untold suffering because of misery and violence. Newgate was no exception. There, the torment manifested itself as a starving black dog that was thought to creep around the prisons on days when there was to be an execution. More recently, in one particularly disturbing event, a former landlord of the Viaduct Tavern went down into the cellar of the pub. The lights suddenly went out, and the door slammed shut. While the landlord was standing there alone and frightened in the pitch darkness, a voice whispered into his ear. It's just you and me it's down here, boy. it said. Perhaps it was one of the former Newgate inmates looking for a little revenge. Thank you for watching this episode of Medieval Madness. Please do subscribe if you're enjoying yes. these videos. <sighs> oh, it was nice. Uh, some of the weird things in the, in the medieval jail history and probably it wasn't nice to do that. And some stuff, so like some jails, they were like, ooh, <sighs> really tough. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed the video too. See you next time. Cheese.